Okay, we had a little uh, technical difficulty um, during the alarm setting video, so I'm actually doing uh, part two of that, that alarm setting video. Uh, we just talk, got done talking about the um, tidal volume and minute ventilation alarms, and now I just want to talk a little bit about the apnea parameters. So setting your apnea pream parameters is um, you know, not the most important thing that we need to worry about in uh, the initial setup. Uh, because in a lot of cases our patient will be apneic so it won't be a big deal but the apneic parameters become more relevant as our patient be begins to perhaps heal and begins to take and initiate spontaneous breaths and, and perhaps we place our patient into a spontaneous mode where they're doing the, the breathing on their own and they're not receiving mandatory breaths we put them in something like CPAP or pressure support ventilation um, in, in old school, they used to do T-piece trials, and we'll talk about that stuff a little later on uh, when we talk about the phase three or liberating our patient from mechanical ventilation. Um, but the basic apnea parameters are that uh, most ventilators have a default default settings, and, and generally you, know, you look at about 20 seconds on your your alarm, your um, your apnea alarm. Basically, what that is is if if the ventilator does not detect a patient taking spontaneous breaths after 20 seconds, the ventilator will then alarm and then the ventilator will transition from the spontaneous mode into a mandatory rate and volume. And this could be assist control or SIMV. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter the mode again, it's just that you, as long as there's a mandatory rate and volume and, and generally there'd be fairly generic rates and volumes and then you can actually go in to most, uh, most of the ventilators will let you go in and modify those settings where uh, maybe it'll be a volume of 500 or 8 to 10, and you can modify that a little bit depending on the patient. Um, but generally, the default's 20 seconds, and then there's just some generic settings, mandatory settings. Um, it'll default back into um, volume control, SIMV, rate of 10, tidal volume of 500 for the the generic adult. Okay. Um, now, when we talk about alarm uh, settings, there there is a really helpful mnemonic um, that I would memorize and it's actually something that we teach in advanced cardiac life support for intubated patients and it's known as dope and when you have a ventilator alarm there are really um, four things that you need to rule out very quickly um, and that is dope d-o-p-e so the first one is d that's displacement of tube or equipment you know is the neutral but tube been displaced has it been pulled out is, is it been dislodged? Is it is it pushed in too far? Is it in one of the, um, in perhaps the right main stem bronchus? Uh, something you need to figure out real quick. O is, is some sort of obstruction. Do I have a, a mucus plug? Do I have an obstructive airway process? Do I have secretions? Um, do I have significant amounts of um, rain out in my circuit? Um, <clears throat> P is uh, pneumothorax. Uh, clearly, it's very important to uh, rule out, recognize pneumothoraces because positive pressure ventilation um, can be uh, pr can be devastating uh, for patients suffering from a pneumothorax. You can actually cause a pneumothorax to become a tension pneumothorax um, with mechanical ventilation, and we know that it's it's generally uh, much more difficult for a patient who's spontaneously breathing to turn, uh, say, a simple pneumothorax into a um, tension pneumothorax, but as soon as we turn the, a negative pressure system into a positive pressure system, it's actually quite easy to develop tension pneumothoraces. And then the last is, is equipment failure, and, and a, there are a myriad of um, things that we need to look at with equipment failure. Um, I would like to add, along with the displaced um, displacement, probably one of the most common things that will become displaced is the ventilator circuit itself and the ventilator circuit can actually be disconnected. Um, I would throw that in the displaced. That's actually very common, a very common cause of a low pressure alarm and that's actually why uh, low pressure alarms are so critical that if that ventilator becomes disconnected and I have a patient who is who is apneic or who, who um, really um, is relying on that ventilator, if that ventilator becomes disconnected uh, I have a dead patient. That that's a that's a pretty much a death uh, a death scenario there if it goes uh, unrecognized. So that low pressure alarm is just actually probably more important in some cases that, than than the high pressure alarm um, because you, you don't ever want to be in a situation where you have a an unrecognized uh, the ventilator um, has become disconnected. 
and that goes um, unrecognized for any more than, than you know a few seconds. Clearly, the consequences can be devastating. Okay, so dope, uh, the things that we need to look at real, real quickly. And then I'll just talk a little bit about the, the basic response to alarm. I'm not going to talk about changing settings so much as, you know, if you have an alarm, if you have a problem, the first thing that we need to look at is the patient. Um, a lot of times people will go over to the ventilator, they'll look at the ventilator, and they'll spend a lot of time looking through graphics and what, what's alarming and silencing the alarm and all this and that. The first place we need to go to is our patient. We need to look at our patient. What is our patient doing? Um, and you know, maybe maybe the tube's disconnected, and I can identify that very rapidly and reconnect the ventilator. Maybe it's something else. But you want to look at your patient, and you want to assess your patient very quickly first before you go over to the ventilator. And um, if it is, and if it is an alarm, say high pressure alarms going on, and you know, all this stuff's going on. Uh, the safest thing for you to do um, while you're troubleshooting the, the, the circuit, the ventilator, whatever, the, the safest thing to do is to disconnect the ventilator and manually ventilate that patient. Um, a lot of times we can spend a lot of time looking at the circuit, looking at the tubing, looking at the ventilator and as, analyzing graphics while our patient um, is deteriorating. That is clearly not a good situation. And, and if this occurs, you need to just disconnect the patient from the ventilator and begin manual ventilation with, with a back valve mask um, you know, attached to the wall outlet on 100% uh, oxygen. Manually ventilate the patient. Um, and this is something that's just very critical and this is actually something that needs to be at the bedside of any intubated patient. That is a back valve mask uh, device with a mask and obviously it has to be working. It's nice to have the BVM without the mask because you can just attach it directly to the end of the endotracheal tube. But remember, uh, the endotracheal tube itself can be dislodged. And what is our primary backup airway? Always. Our primary backup airway will always be mask ventilation. Getting a good seal with the mask, good positioning of, of the neck and the jaw, good CE technique, and manually ventilating that patient. And we need to be prepared to do that with every single intubated patient. We need to expect that at some point their air will become compromised and we will need to use that bag valve mask to manually ventilate the patient. So when you're doing your ventilator check every two hours, that is a critical item that needs to be in that patient's room. It's a bag valve mask that's functioning and it has a mask that fits the patient. Um, so that's really all I'm going to say uh, right at this point on alarms. And this is the um, almost the final video. I think I'm going to do one more video, um, that, and that will bring us into the next week of, of lab where we actually talk about changing phase two settings. So change or transitioning into phase two uh, ventilator management. Uh, hope you guys uh, in, enjoyed this videos, uh, this, these two videos on alarm settings, and we'll see you on the last video. Take care.